Meguiar's presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associated with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug, if you haven't already. On today's episode of McGuire's Car Crazy, we're back in Las Vegas at the premier event for automotive performance products and accessories, the Specialty Equipment Market Association's annual trade show and convention, known as the SEMA Show, had so much to see and so many people to talk to. We ran into some of our old friends who have not only seen this show grow from its infancy, but the car hobby as well. We also talked to some people who had great product out on the floor. You won't want to miss what they have to say when McGuire's Car Crazy returns. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. The SEMA show has established itself firmly as the premier trade show of its kind in the world. Many people consider it a gauge of how well the car hobby is actually doing. With over 2 million square feet, 1,500 exhibitors, 1,300 vehicles, and record-breaking crowds, it's safe to say it's doing pretty well. Alex Exidius, pioneer of the hobby and the SEMA show, was the founder of the original SoCal Speed Shop. We're here with one of my buddies and one of the legends of hot rodding, none other than Alex Exidius. Alex, uh, great to have you here with us today. Thank you very, very much. Uh, SoCal Speed Shop was one of the very first speed shops in America. So, I mean, talk about cutting edge. I mean, we want to talk about one of the fathers of the, of the industry. Uh, you are one of those, no question about it. The whole hobby so respects you. And um, well, what do you think you. about all this? This show is so incredible. I, I told somebody just a minute ago that the Chrysler display here that we're in front of, is bigger than the whole SEMA show was when it started. <laughs> <laughs> this is so remarkable, this place. It really is. Now, when the show first began, you actually were selling space. So, you, I mean, you actually helped get this whole thing started. I sold the booths in the first show. As I say, there were 98 booths and uh, was in Dodger Stadium. It was cold and damp, terrible. The next year, we, we off that small success, we moved to the Anaheim Convention Center and became a real show then. Yeah, yeah. And, after, and it was right after the second show that we approached the SEMA Board of Directors on calling the show the SEMA Show. The original title was the High Speed Industry and Custom Show. But uh, we changed it to SEMA and we had that great relationship with them for years. Our good friend Brock Yates of Cannonball Run fame and editor-at-large of Car and Driver magazine also remembers some of the name changes before settling on Specialty Equipment Market Association. We're here with Mr. Cannonball Run himself, Brock Yates. Uh, Brock, great to catch up with you again. Oh, Barry, believe me, it's, it, it, you know, it's always a thrill to walk into this place. It just, Isn't it amazing? It, every year, more Isn't and amazing? more incredible. I can't believe it. We did a show with Brock uh, a while back. Some of you may have caught it, but Brock is the instigator of what uh, became known as the Cannonball Run. And uh, I just happened to he have here the new book that Brock, well, actually not new now, it's third, it's new, it's but it's already printing. third printing. Yeah, it's amazing, Barry. We're just so pleased with it. it uh, I've, been, I've been talking about doing this book for probably 15 years, and my wife Pamela said, do it for your two little grandchildren and let them know the old boy wasn't just reading them bedtime stories. So it's, it's been a great, great book. Brock, you've been around this hobby as long as I have, and you've seen all the changes. How do you explain what's going on here? It, you know, it's incredible. I mean, I can. I think I came to uh, this show when it was SEMA, the sp speed equipment. Having seen this thing literally explode, it's breathtaking. And I think what's wonderful about Barry is that the hobby is bringing younger people along with it. It's not just a bunch of guys our age uh, that are kind of nostalgic about these things. We've got young people coming in all the time, which is wonderful. So yeah. the hobby's growing with 
with younger people. I'm willing to predict that uh, this, this show will ultimately become larger than Frankfurt. Uh, I think it's going to become the largest automobile show in the world. I think you're absolutely right because it's not just a trade show, it's an experience. It really expresses not just the business side of the automotive industry, but the passion side exactly. of it. And it's the only show in the world that does it. Yeah. I'm so encouraged because remember, when I, I went through the 70s when we were convinced uh, that uh, uh, environmental and safety movements were yeah. going to kill the automobile. Oh and, uh, and we were all depressed and felt terrible about it. We took speed it. out of the out of the acronym of uh, we've had to change from speed equipment manufacturers to specialty equipment exactly. because we didn't even want to talk about speed. Yeah, you're going to save the industry with <laughs> air fresheners yeah. or something. Brock, I know you got to run. Great to see you, man. Thanks so much, Brock. Oh, it's honored to so. be here. Coming up next on McGuire's Car Crazy, whether you call it a hot rod or a tuner, customizing or modifying, it's all here at the SEMA Show. So don't go away. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We often cross paths with journalist and photographer Bob McClurg, probably best identified with his passion for the Mustang. He has been published in just about every automotive magazine in the country. He's seen the evolution of the hobby through many eyes. One of the more famous pictures I shot is a sideways picture of uh, Wild Willie Borsch in the Wing Express fuel altered at Pomona. And I was on a 20-foot step ladder, and uh, he came out sideways, and all I could hear was, people beating feet and, and they're going to get him, it's going to get him and step ladders falling over and people running. I said, you know, if I jump off this thing, I'm going to break my leg probably anyway, a 20 foot ladder. So I followed him around and I was the only one who got the shot. You know? If anything, you're identified with Mustangs. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I actually, drag racing is my passion, but uh, Fords and Mustangs in particular uh, is my general interest and I own uh, 12 of them. Is this a great time for hot rodders or anybody in the car hobby? I mean, it's exploding in all directions. We're sitting here two million square yeah. feet at the SEMA this show. This is fabulous. Oh, oh, talk, talk about that for a moment. I mean, you've lived through it like I have. What What is your spin on what's well, taking you know, place right now? Mainstream America, uh, you know, the hot rodders from the from the 40s and 50s and, and, and the baby boomer offspring of their children, that's all now mainstream America. So hot rodding is a mainstream America pastime as, as much as NASCAR, as much as NFL or uh, basketball or anything, baseball, any of that now. I mean, it's truly arrived. I mean, CEOs, doctors, lawyers. I it's mean, mainstream. Everybody <laughs> is into hot rodding. George Barris is the king of customs, and he's held that reign for over half a century. George, uh, bigger than life, as always. You got cars all over this place. Yeah, so great to join the family, the McGuire family. That's been so many years, and I enjoy it every time I come to the show to be part of your car crazy. Uh, how many cars do you have here? I mean, everywhere I look, it seems like there's another Barris Custom. Well, it's so exciting year because we had all these movie projects. The Vin Diesel Triple X, which is a GTO Pontiac. And then, of course, the Fast and Furious RX-7. And then we just brought in a new introduction, the CCC, which is what we call the Chrysler City Coupe, finishing a movie called DK-1 will be re released in the early spring. You not only are not slowing down, it seems like you are busier than you have ever been. Well, the industry has grown so much, as you can well see here at SEMA. When I started way back in the 40s and 50s, I mean, we were lucky to have uh, bolt-on hubcaps. And now you got 2,000 sets of wheels that are going in all directions and tires, special tires and everything. It just shows you that this industry is like a wheel. It'll just keep going each year. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and better. Talk about the very first days of the thought of customizing a car. I mean, it just you just did it with a blank sheet of paper. No, There was nobody to follow. You were creating this art. Well, in those early days, way back in the early 40s, we had to pioneer because the only thing we had was an arc welder and a settling welder. But that's the way it had to start. We had nothing to work with. We've shared a lot of great memories together, yeah, and uh, there's yeah. a lot more ahead. Thank you, George, for stopping Thank by. For I love you, man. <laughs> Larry Weiner has been in the modifying business since the early 90s, and his showing it seem is always extremely impressive. The vehicle behind me is the Dodge Ram Cannonball Express, and the creator of this incredible vehicle is none other than Larry Weiner, the owner of Performance West and the creator of so many of the great cars you're seeing here at the SEMA show. How did this all start for you? Well, what happened was, like many people, I was an enthusiast building show cars for myself and uh, decided one day at 45 years old to take a hobby and turn it into a career, kind of one of those midlife crisis deals. Fortunately, a lot of my background was marketing, research, and advertising was my major in college, and said, well, can we take building cool cars 
and make a business case for this and make a living at this. And that's a big transition. And you're really on the cutting edge. How many cars do you have on the floor at SEMA this year? We have 28 image vehicles on the floor at SEMA show this year in a variety of boots and exhibits and running the gamut from trucks like this, this Dually turbo diesel to tuner cars. So we try to cover every element of this business model and, and the enthusiast hobby to try to build something for everybody. Stay tuned. When McGuire's Car Crazy returns, we sit down with Titus and Chip Foose. <laughs> Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. Chip Foose has been tinkering with cars since he was seven years old. His designs are so well known throughout the entire car hobby that his name alone is all the advertising he needs. And one of his best clients, whom he counts among his closest friends, is television personality Christopher Titus. They took a moment to talk with us during the show. We are with a couple of really car crazy guys right now. Titus has, does so many things for the hobby. And in the midst of all the fun, you really are an inspiration for, for the hobby to uh, a whole other generation of, oh, of thanks, folks. So it's really yeah. important to us. Thanks for bringing the kids into, uh, you know, cool is cool. And if you're six years old or 60 years old, cool is cool. And to have a, a TV show where we, I got to own a hot rod shop and have the six-year-olds go, I like that guy, he's funny. And what is that he's driving? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah it's cool, thanks. It really is. And, and beside uh, Titus is uh, Chip Foose. And uh, Chip is like the artisan of the hot rod field. I mean, it, he's a it, Frank Lloyd Wright of hot rod. He is the Frank Lloyd Wright. That's the best way to put it. I mean, the eye that he has and the attention to detail and some of the great hot rods out there of his design and Chip, your major oh, icon. I, I just here. feel lucky to do what I love doing. You, I mean, uh, it is fun, and I mean, you really enjoy yeah, it. It's when you get customers and friends like Christopher that allow you to take, you know, their car to a level that uh, that is a dream for them. You notice he said That's customer first. <laughs> Said, customers friend. and friends. And friends. Yeah. Customers <laughs> Once and, the check friends. clears, friend. <laughs> every time I every time I argue with Chip, like we just finished a, a, a Chip we like a, yeah, I wrote the checks, he built it. Um, 56 Chevy Speedster that's over here at yeah. Seaman. But every time I argue with Chip uh, about a design or something or a color or something, I always get burned. Every time he said, okay, we can do it that way, it always looks wrong. So I've stopped arguing with him about so cars just, and, just do and it. he doesn't help me with jokes. So, <laughs> well, try, on the other I hand, do he, he might. Hey, he doesn't hey. need any help, but uh, you know. Oh, hey, excuse me. Wow, that's I'm out of here. Well, th this car was actually d originally conceived by a fan of his who sent a picture to him, who was Keith Kuchar, and oh. Christopher showed me the drawing, and we made a few changes to it. And my father we made actually, a lot of changes to it. We actually, I said, I said, I like this guy's idea. What's the next level? And we discussed uh, coming up with a 1956 Chevy that would have a road race feel to it. And I'm driving it home from here. It's been it's been done four days, and I'm driving it home. Oh my God! Yeah, he doesn't want me to drive it home. Yeah. Oh, he can drive it home. <laughs> well, when you drive it home, uh, Jay Leno will be very proud of you for doing. Yeah, that. Leno. Yeah, Leno. <laughs> out there driving. Well, as much as I've written, I write for Good Guys Riding Custom. You know, write a car, uh, an article for them every month, and and I I rip the guys. That, you know, some guys will build a two hundred thousand dollar car and then put it in a trailer. And then, you know, Street Rider of the Year this year left Columbus in a trailer, and they wrecked it on the way home and destroyed it. It was in the trailer. <laughs> in the trailer. In the trailer. I'm like, you know, I'd rather wreck it driving it. At least then I can wave at people and they go, well, that used to be a cool car. As much crud as I've given these guys that put these cars in trailers, there's no way I can put it in a trailer. I'll be beat up at the time we hit the, the city limits, so I have to drive it. And I'm bringing a fire extinguisher. <laughs> Although Foose Design builds things where you don't need them. You or a young guy, and yet you're already an icon in this business. Talk about, I mean, from your dad, I mean, it all started, I mean, all your life, I mean, this is, this is. My dad started when he was 14, and I remember as a little kid, he was working with Gene Winfield at AMT, so I got to see all these wild, fun show cars. He started his own shop in 69, and when I was seven years old, I started working with him. And I've grown up, I met uh, Alex Trembulus at the same time, and Alex told me about Art Center, College of Design. So I knew from the time I was seven years old that I was headed to Pasadena and got to go through from that. age seven years old? Yeah, child Correct. services was at his house a lot. <laughs> you have a kid painting right. cars at seven? <laughs> Tell the story about the Volkswagen hood, about how your dad taught you to paint. Well, actually, my dad, the first project I did, he had a wrecked Volkswagen hood in the back of the shop. So he brought it in and said, here, straighten this out, fix it, and paint it. So I did the mud work and hammer and all of this and got it painted and seven. had it all. He's seven. Had that painted. Actually, it was when I was nine. Oh, he was nine. I, I'm sorry. I, oh, oh well, he was, that he was an expert everything. by then. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I had to work my way up. <laughs> <laughs> we were sweeping floors. At seven, you're an apprentice. At nine, you're a journeyman. I get it. Go ahead. Finish. So I painted this hood, and then he said, "Okay, go ahead and put some graphics on it." So I had done some flames and some different things just from watching him, and he helped me. 
And I got it all done and I had color sand and rubbed it and it was beautiful and I was so proud of it. And my dad went to his toolbox and grabbed his hammer, walked over and just nailed it right in the middle of it. He said, now fix it. And that's where I started learning. Chip has a way of blending old and new together in a way that, that no one does. It, it harks to the past but looks to the future, every one of his designs. He won't brag about himself, but he just, he won, Jay Mays gave him the first year of the best of show of all the Ford cars. Both cars, the T-Bird and the 56 Chevy, were like last minute. He was thrashing. I mean, he did a full concept car in six weeks on that T-Bird on top of finishing my car. And his crew is amazing. Those guys at Foos Design. So, the backs of the seats are in the trunk over it on the showroom floor. So oh, wow. I said, we got to put them on. So in the middle of this crowd or on the car, we open the trunk and we bolt. Me and Chip and I are in the car bolting the seat backs on. My buddy Tommy's helping us out. He's you people should have been taking pictures oh, they of were, that. Believe me, they were. That's, that's, that's so we, we waited. And, so it's no longer you finish the car right before SEMA. Yeah. You wait till you get to SEMA and finish the car on the floor. That's what we're doing now. Yeah. Nobody's having more fun than these two guys at the show. And, and you can hardly walk your walk around here. Everybody's asking for both your autographs. Well, somewhere. he's a star here, man. You can't get six feet without Chip. Yeah. Just, Chip! Thanks for carving out a few moments here to sit down and talk with us. Thank you very much. Our it's, pleasure. It's always great being on the show. Thank Thanks, you. man. Chip, for Thank you. your great work, great design. You're very tolerant of us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Don't leave now. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we have more people to talk to and more cool stuff to show you on McGuire's Car Crazy. Welcome back. Walking around the two million square feet at the SEMA show, we ran into all kinds of car guys. At the Toyota display, 20-time Baja champ Ivan Ironman Stewart talked to us about some of the highlights of his career. A big part of the SEMA show addresses off-roading. We have one of the icons of off-roading, Ivan Ironman Stewart. Ivan, great to be with you today. Oh, great to be here, Barry. And you're right, off-roading is a huge part of the SEMA show. And it's, it, you know, I, I love coming here just because there's so much activity and this thing has grown so much. In fact, I got lost getting here, as you know. How did you get into off-roading? Well, I got in, uh, gosh, 30 years ago and it was just starting down in Southern California with the Baja races and all. And I was just intrigued by it. An off-road race is more of a um, adventure than it is a race. And not necessarily everybody's gonna see you do this race. And that's what's cool about it because if you're not very good at it, you don't, nobody's gonna know it. What was the wildest, car craziest experience you ever had racing down the Baja? being lost, uh, being stuck in the sand, the tides come in, you know, the, the, the cattle are right in front of you, the booby traps that the, the spectators built. I mean, I've got, we could write a book. How about spectators coming out and helping you when you're in a jam? Well, I've had that too. I got broke down one night. I had a flat at about 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of nowhere. So black, there was nothing going on. There was nobody around. And here come, out of the middle of nowhere, here come a couple guys to, to help me. <laughs> hey, Ivan, can we help you? You know. Nothing like off-road racing. Off-road racing, especially Baja. And I'll be going down again. Not necessarily racing, but I'll be supporting my whole pro truck Series. Fantastic. What a career. Thanks for all the memories. It's been great, and we wish you the best on the new series. Thank you very much. I very appreciate that. The SEMA show is about equipment, and a show about SEMA wouldn't be complete without showing some of what the 39th annual SEMA show had to offer. not only a good friend but one of the people that I most uh, really respect in the automotive industry I'm talking about Norm Miller the chairman of Interstate Batteries Norm uh, I great. love you bad and great hey, to have man. you great to be by. here anyway what's new for you in the future we have some uh, battery centers that we're opening and we're doing in-store stores for every battery for every need calling them all battery centers and you know most people don't know that a family of four uh, with no teenagers has 28 batteries and half the time they don't know where to get them all we're selling everything from your watch battery to uh, scope power little batteries, and uh, you can right? uh, you can buy them on the internet direct. Well, keep up the passion. Thank keep you. up the good work. Appreciate good. it. Oh, we love you. Respect you immensly. Thank you, Mary, so, and you too. To you. Thanks a lot. One of the hottest German tuners is catching a lot of attention here in the States. Brabus Motor Steve Beatty tells about their new fully modified Mercedes S600 by Turbo. Great product here on display. I mean, every one of these cars is just amazing. Uh, this S-Class behind us uh, just 
in, in particular just blows me away. Yeah, that's a Mercedes-Benz S600 that's been fully modified by Brabus to include a 6.7 liter engine upgrade, 450 horsepower, 20 inch wheels, front and rear bumper, exhaust, lowered, and then the piece de resistance is the multimedia package. We have to take a look at that. We have to go in there and play around a little bit. There's some work to be done in there and there's some play to be done. We have a full Pentium computer to uh, make sure that you're online all the time so you don't miss any important phone calls and faxes. Uh, there's also some entertainment in there with DVD, VHS, and even a TV. Okay, Boda, you gotta check us out on some of these toys. Yeah, indeed, that's a toy, but uh, it's a toy for, for big boys. What's a big advantage? indeed is that when you're sitting in your office every two seconds somebody's coming in having a question bringing your coffee whatever they all disturb you when you're sitting in this car it's a fantastic area nobody disturbs you you can just work we have with us uh, Oscar Kowalewski who is the founder of the Polish Race Car Drivers Association that he calls it the Polish Race Car Driver Association for some reason, but Oscar. <laughs> Barry, it's your show, so we can call it the Polish Racing Drivers, but for all the Polish people out there, it's really the Polish Racing Drivers of America. Got a really cool race car right here in front of us. We're gonna have you drive it in a minute, so talk about it. This is the first time public showing at a trade show that this wow. car is here. It's 47 pounds and I can sit on it and drive it's it. It's amazing the weight that it carries and even with the weight, it scoots. It's uh, neat, we got adjustable seat, adjustable steering for the young children and I love the program and we're gonna have to sell 50,000 of these cars to make even. On behalf of the 50,000 kids that are gonna be able to drive these, and particularly my five grandsons and one oh, grandson. Well, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to sell you 10 cars. You know, but go. thank you so much. Thanks for yeah. Well, that's all for now. This is such a treat for me to share some of the great people of my life with you. Hope you've enjoyed as much as we have, and I hope these stories will make you just a little bit more car crazy. Thanks for watching. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the Meguiar's family of appearance car care products. Meguiar's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.